Uh, right now, this is re a reverse crash. So I'm going to drop this down, and we're going to use this. We're going to drop it right before it, uh, like after that intro. Now, let me just zoom in on it so we can look at the reverse crash real quick. And uh, there's a couple things about it. Now, I'm going to show you how you can make your own reverse crash. So if you find a crash symbol or if you record one, it's really simple. And the great thing about these, these uh, a file like this is you can use it over and over again once you've reversed it. But in any case, I'm going to select it. And if we go up under our Audio Suite plugins, you're going to see an option that says reverse. It brings up this little um, plug-in right here. If I grab this and hit preview, it was very loud. You can, you can hear it. It's, a, it's now a forward. So I hit process. It just reverses it. This is what we call the audio suite plugins. It's not real time. These are the, the ones that are offline process. So really, I would import a regular crash and then hit the, the, um, the process button and it would reverse it for us, which is great. That's um, basically what I did here in terms of getting this. I did this in another session, and then I just constantly reused the same reverse crash. Now, the thing about a reverse crash is, uh, or any kind of reverse drum hit, any kind of like percussion sound, we can use these to great effect to help with transitions. Uh, if we're transitioning from verse to a chorus, or from a, uh, uh, you know, intros or outros, whatever. It's just a great way of letting your audience know, your listener know, that something is about to change. And it's kind of a cool thing that we can use. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into slip mode, and I'm going to shorten this up a little bit. I'm going to move this over. We want to make sure that we're right on the down. So you can see this is where the file is ending, and I want to make sure that it's right there at measure 5. And you can see as I zoom in even further, now I'm down to the sample level. And I can back out. So there, it's exactly one bar long. That means if I move it, it's always going to snap to the grid. Uh, if I copy it, it's always going to snap. This way, when I use my reverse crash, I'm going to turn it down because it's really loud. And I also want to add uh, some effects to it, but we'll listen to that in just one second. So now I've got my reverse crash in place. I went ahead and cut off the beginning of it so it fits exactly at one bar within this session. And I think we're about done.